It's a free space. Yes. <laughs> right, JJ, the for a minute here. <laughs> what winners, what sporting events headquarters are located in Wasilla, Alaska? Little League World Series, Iditarod Sled Dog Race, Special Olympics, Wimbledon. The Iditarod Slog Dog Sled Dog Race. I did a red. I did a rod sled dog race. Is my final answer. There we go. Dog sled. Hundred dollars. Dog sled race. Got it right. I can't wait to watch this video when I get on my iPad. All right, your $100 question is in the basket. Here's your next oh, this is my first time doing this. All right, we're going for 200 everybody. So here we go. For $200. What game do baseball players traditionally play to warm up for the actual game? Salt, pepper, sugar, tobacco. Um... Hold on a minute. What uh, game do baseball players traditionally play to warm up for the actual game? Salt, pepper, sugar, or tobacco? What? Like, what game? Yeah. <laughs> Salt, pepper, sugar, tobacco. What game do baseball players traditionally play? Um. <laughs> oh. 
Do you know, Jay? <laughs> Trying to figure it out. Well, you know what? How about if I use a lifeline? Go for it. I'm gonna use a lifeline. Ask the audience. Yeah, that would probably be the best bet. Go ahead, choose your lifeline. Ask the audience. 86% said pepper. Pretty strong result. 8% sugar, 4% tobacco, 2% salt. B, pepper, final answer. Going with the majority. That's right. Two hundred dollars, going for three. <laughs> Two hundred big smackers. Want to make it three hundred? Have a look at this next question. Three hundred dollars. According to a famous sports cliche, often attributed to Leo Durocher, oh, I know this. Nice guys finish how? First, last, gracefully. After the tortoise, nice guys finish last. B. You feel confident that answer B will be a base hit? Yep. You're right. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Did the main lights here? <clears throat> hey, that's question number three and three hundred dollars. Now, for five hundred dollars, take a look at your next question. Here we go for five hundred. As we play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Sports Edition, Game 2. Of these venerable golf courses, which is the only one to have hosted the Men's U.S. Open? Royal Melbourne, Valderrama, Karnowski, Shinnecock. U.S. Open and golf. Which of the... What, of are, these... the names of, what are the names of the courses? They are Royal Melbourne, Valderrama, Karnowski, Shinnecock. The only one to have hosted the Men's U.S. Open. The Men's U.S. Open. The only golf course, yep. <laughs> okay, what are the names of the courses one more time? Royal Melbourne, Valderrama, Karnowski, Shinnecock. Shinnecock, final answer. Want to go ahead and make that your final answer? Yeah. Tiger. Go for the gold with answer D. All right. Tiger! That's right. Thank you, Jay. Bye, Tiger. Thank you. Shinnecock is on Long Island, New York. The other courses are in Europe and Australia. Beer. Forces. Australian for beer. Phew. Ow. In a bottle. Now let's take a look at that. Let's do Ow. <laughs> Here we go for a thousand. Here we go. Under NFL rules, a defense team cannot score a touchdown on which of these plays? Kickoff, extra point, punt, interception. Not score a touchdown on which one of these? Kickoff, extra point, punt, interception. I think it's an extra point. Are you sure? Yes. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Okay, you think answer B looks like a dead center punt. Thank you, Jay. All right. Guarantee the third game. Wow. Well, that's one grand in your pocket. Now let's see if you can make it two grand. Here's your next question. For 2000. Former NBA star Daryl Dawkins often claimed he was from what planet? Mars? Lovetron? City Alpha 6? The Klingon homeworld? Daryl Dawkins. Daryl Dawkins claimed he was from what planet?
D-A-W-K-I-N-S. Claim to us from what planet? Alright, love try it is. Final answer. <laughs> Alright, you think answer me looks like a touchdown? You got it! Yes! Four thousand dollars coming up. Nice job. Now let's see your four thousand dollar question. Which of these star athletes is well known as the Polish Rifle? Dirk Nowitzki, Wayne Gretzky, Ron Jaros Jaworski, Terry Lipinski. The Polish Rifle? Yes. Ron Jaworski. Ron Jaworski final. So, answer C. So I know it wasn't Wayne Gretzky, and I didn't think it was Terry Lipinski. That's right. Thank you. Jaws is best known as the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles in the 1970s and 1980s. Pennsylvania. <laughs> wow, you're just eight questions away from becoming a new millionaire. Now check out your $8,000 question. Eight grand on the line. What team did the Am Amazing Mets upset to win the 1969 World Series? Detroit Tigers, Baltimore Orioles, Boston Red Sox, Oakland A's. 1969 World Series. Yep. What team did the What team did the Amazing Mets? Jay's favorite number. Uh, Baltimore <laughs> Orioles. Final answer. Want to go ahead and make that your final answer? <laughs> To be might be a home run, huh? Well, you're right. You're right. Eight grand. One to sixteen thousand dollars. That's eight thousand dollars, but you still got a few more laps to go. Come on, push the pedal to the metal for this next question, which is worth sixteen thousand bucks. Here we go. Sixteen thousand dollars. Saints head coach Mike Ditka acquired Ricky Williams by trading all of his 1999 draft choices to what team? Minnesota Vikings, Washington Redskins, New York Jets, Carolina Panthers. Mike Ditka. Uh, yep. Repeat the question again just to be safe. Saints head coach Mike Ditka acquired Ricky Williams by trading all of his 1999 draft choices to what team? <laughs> Mike Dick, uh, <laughs> Ricky Williams. Washington Redskins. You're confident answer. Washington B, Redskins sir. final answer. And you're right. Sixteen thousand. Ditka was fired after the Saints and Williams had a disappointing 1999 season. We're going for thirty-two thousand well, dollars. You certainly don't need a pinch hitter, do you? You're doing just great. Now for thirty-two thousand dollars, here we go. Here we go for thirty-two thousand. What college won the most NCAA Division I women's basketball championships in the twentieth century with six? Louisiana Tech, USC, Tennessee, Old Dominion. Women's basketball championships. NCAA Division One. Uh huh. Yep, NCAA Division One. 
six, six six wins, uh huh. <clears throat> what are the answers? Louisiana Tech, USC, Tennessee, Old Dominion. Tennessee. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Final. I'm gonna go ahead and make that your final answer. You think NCC can keep the drive alive? Oh. You are Thank you, ready. Jay. Thirty-two thousand. $32,000, no matter how badly you do for the rest of the game. So let's get back to it. Come on. For $64,000. Here it comes. For $64,000, two lifelines are left. And this is a free shot, so no penalties for getting it wrong. As of April 2000, who is the only pitcher in MLB history to win the Cy Young Award with the last place team? Steve Bedrosian for the Phillies? Steve Carlton for the Phillies? Randy Jones for the Padres? Or Rolly Fingers for the Brewers? In 2000? As of April 2000, yes. The only pitcher in MLB history to win the Cy Young Award with the last place team. The last place team? Yes. And what are the answers? You have... Steve Bedrosian, Phillies. Steve Carlton, Phillies. Randy Jones, Padres. Or Rolly Fingers for the Brewers. Should I do a lifeline just to be safe? Yes, to be safe. Yep. Better be safe than sorry. I'm gonna phone a friend. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. George the beer guy is the perfect oh, person no to answer this question. Let's give him a call. <laughs> Hang on, I'm still getting the hack at his cell phone thing. Uh, okay, that clock goes next to my hand. Uh, that's George. Hey, George, it's Regis. Something a lot of cold ones today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you got your hands full. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. Uh, you know, I'll fix that one. Are you ready to take out a millionaire sports question? Sure. Lay it on me while I get some more beer for the crowd. You have 30 seconds, and now, here it is. Well, I'm pretty sure it was Sir Andy Jones who uh, took home the Cyclones Award, even though his team was in the cellar. Hey, thanks. Oh, for he says Randy advice. Jones Padres, I and he sounded confident. Outrage. George C. Well, I think I have the answer. You think so? Is that what you were thinking? Nope. Well, what did you think the answer was? Steve Carlton of the Phillies. How sure are you, Jay? I am very confident. Should I go with your, your answer? Go with my answer. I think it's right. Or should I do a 50-50 to be safe? It's up to you. I think I'm going to do the 50-50. If my, answer, if my answer is still up there, go for it. What's your answer again? Please Steve Carlton. Four answers, but make sure that one of the remaining answers is the correct one. Go He's still there. You now have 15 Ooh, What's the other answer? Randy Jones Padres. Which is the phone of friends answer, correct? Yeah. But your answer is Steve yeah, Carlton? All right. Final answer. And if it's wrong, that's okay. Yes. Steve Carlton for the Phillies. You're right. 
like you hey. nailed it. Thank you, Jay. Carlton was 27 and 10 for the 1972 Phils, even though the team's record was 59 and 97. Phillies, who better know than me? Four away from a million, but we're out of lifelines. Some serious money here. This next question is worth $125,000. I know the third millionaire actually oh, went almost, almost that far with no life fines and won the whole thing. Here we go. 125000 Which of these Hall of Fame bowlers is left-handed? Don oh, Carter, no. Dick Weber, Earl Anthony, Marshall Holman. <laughs> Welcome to my sport. <laughs> Bowling Hall of Fame. Which Hall of Fame bowler is left-handed? Left-handed. Oh, shoot, I should know this. Do you need the choices again? Yes, please. Don Carter, Dick Weber, Earl Anthony, Marshall Holman. Alright. Uh, say them off one at a time. Don Carter. Hey, Don Carter. Dick Weber, and that's with one B. Okay, Don Carter is right-handed. What about Dick Weber? Dick Weber? Yeah, with one B. Okay. Um... Dick Weber. Are you ready for the next choice? Earl Anthony. Earl Anthony. Uh huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Earl Anthony is left-handed. I'll go with him. Final answer. Would you like to make that your final answer? Yes. Earl Anthony. Final. You're confident you will not crash and burn with answer C. I am confident. And you're right. Yes! Okay, we're getting serious here. $250,000. Inching closer and closer to the finish line for a quarter of a million dollars. Here we go. For $250,000. Which of these heavyweight boxers won a gold medal fighting for Canada in the 1988 Olympics? Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe, Andrew Golota, Donovan Razor Ruddock. Okay, boxing at 1988 Olympics. Yep, who won a gold medal fighting for Canada? 1988? Yes. Fighting out of Canada. 
Won a gold medal fighting for Canada. Fighting for Canada. That would be Lennox Lewis. I trust you. Lennox Lewis, final answer. I want to go ahead and make that. He was in the super heavyweight division. So you think you could gain some yardage with answer A? Yes. Yes! Terrific! You're just two questions away from making money like a pro. Well, like a pro in the 1970s. The next question is worth a half million dollars. For five hundred thousand dollars. It's getting very serious. Which of these countries has never had a driver win the Formula One World Championship? Brazil, USA, South Africa, Belgium. I'm not much of a race car fan, so I thought I wouldn't know this one. <laughs> what country has never had a driver win the Formula One World Championship? Two thousand. Yeah. All right, which countries do we have in there? Brazil, USA, South Africa, Belgium. Confident that South Africa has had a winner win the Formula One race? That was in 1979. Okay, so USA and Brazil. So USA and Brazil both have had winners? USA has had winners, yes. And Brazil too? Brazil has had winners as well. Then I'm going with Belgium. Belgium is the final answer. Final answer is Belgium. South Africa only has had one, while Brazil has had at least four. Your pick again is a D. You. Okay. <laughs> and I had five. That's right. Yes! <laughs> Time to go for the knockout. Take a look at your $1 million question. Here it is. For a million. On April 6th, 1973, who became the first designated hitter, the first designated hitter to hit a regular season home run? Larry Heisel, Tony Oliva, Rico Cardi, Orlando Cepeda. All right. Uh, wait, uh, repeat the answers one more time, please. Larry Heisel. Tony Oliva, Rico Cardi, Orlando Cepeda. On April. On April 6th, 1973. Who was the first. Designated hitter to hit a regular season home run? And the answer is one more time, please. Okay. You got Larry Heisel. Tony Oliva, Rico Cardi, Orlando Cepeda. I'm confident that it is Tony Oliva. I will trust you. Would you like to make that your final answer? Are we going to tackle out another million dollars? 
Ew, where are your manners? All over the answer. <laughs> if it's worth a million dollars, you better retell you better think about something else. Yes! Oh, how about that? You're a million! Another million! Don't spend it all on autographed baseballs. What a million! Kazoo. Ow. And the crowd goes wild. They Yay! cheer it for you, our newest millionaire. And now you can buy that professional sports team you always wanted. Wait, who am I kidding? You couldn't pay the locker room staff with the million bucks you'll get from us. It's not like you really want any money. It's just a wow. game. I keep telling you that. But you got them some good practice. When they call you up to the majors, you're going to be ready. Okay, everybody. We'll see you all for that next video coming soon. Latest. Wow.